president and as a candidate for re-election in 2020. Taking a few hours out of his week-long vacation to make a speech at a petrochemical plant under construction in western Pennsylvania, calling it an example of U.S. energy dominance. But even though the president's trip was funded by taxpayers, he went into campaign mode. In 2020, we're running, so you better get out there and make sure we win. The president also used the occasion of what was supposed to be an official event to bash Democrats. I'm going to talk to one of the Democrats vying to run against the president. Joining me now, entrepreneur and Democratic presidential candidate, Andrew Yang. So good to see you again. Uh, it's great to see you as well, Thank Don. you so much. So let's talk about today. The president used an official speech to launch an attack on his opponents, to pat himself on the back for a whole host of things, and to tell a bunch of lies. His former friend and comms director, you know, Anthony Scaramucci, uh, said today, the emperor has no clothes. So the emperor has no clothes, but what is it going to take to beat him? Well, we have to start solving the problems of the American people that got Donald Trump elected. And right now, he's crowing about GDP. GDP's at record highs while financial insecurity, stress, anxiety, even suicides and drug overdoses are all also at record highs. So we have to improve the reality on the ground for more Americans, and that's how we're going to beat him in 2020. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about your sign signature proposal? Of course. A thousand dollars a month in universal basic income for every American adult. You're calling it a freedom dividend. Why did you focus on that, and how is that the solution to what ails America? Well, to me, the driving force behind Donald Trump's victory in 2016 was that we blasted away 4 million manufacturing jobs in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, all these swing states. Mm -hmm. And when I dug into the numbers, unfortunately, retraining programs didn't work, and many of these communities are struggling to find a path forward. Martin Luther King championed a freedom dividend, in essence, in the 60s, and one state has had a dividend just like this for almost 40 years, Alaska, which is paid for by oil money. And we can pay for a dividend for all Americans using technology money. Because right now you have trillion dollar tech companies like Amazon paying zero in taxes. If we get some of the gains from this economy into our hands, then we'll create a trickle up economy. And that's what the freedom dividend is meant to kickstart. How will they pay for universal basic income? You mean how will we yeah. like as a society? Again, if you have a trillion dollar tech company like Amazon that's closing 30% of our malls and stores, paying zero in taxes, then it is going to be hard to pay for yeah. a, lot of, a lot of things. But if you give the American people our fair share of every Amazon sale, every Google search, every Facebook ad, every robot truck mile eventually, then we can easily afford a freedom dividend of $1,000 per American. But you know what they say that they said that Amazon creates jobs, gives people jobs, it improves neighborhoods and on and on and on. Do you disagree with that? Oh, Amazon's doing a lot of the job creating, but it's also doing a lot of job destroying on the other end. They recently even just came clean and said that they're going to spend billions of dollars trying to retrain their own employees. But you know who they're not going to retrain? The 30% of retail workers who work in the malls and main street stores that are closing because Amazon's soaking up $20 billion in business every year. Mm -hmm. They're retraining their own people, but they're not going to retrain the mom and pop business owner in New Hampshire or Iowa. I want to play this moment from the CNN debates last month. Watch this. You know what the talking heads couldn't stop talking about after the last debate? It's not the fact that I'm somehow number four on this stage in national polling. It was the fact that I wasn't wearing a tie. Instead of talking about automation and our future, including the fact that we automated away four million manufacturing jobs, hundreds of thousands right here in Michigan, we're up here with makeup on our faces and our rehearsed attack lines, playing roles in this reality TV show. It's one reason why we elected a reality TV star as our president. I mean, that got uh, thunderous applause there. I was on the stage that night. People loved that line. They also loved it at home uh, and on social media. So the question is, how does a Democrat run against that reality show that's happening now? You know, uh, Don, it's been a joy running for president because people have been digging into the ideas behind this campaign. And a lot of these ideas take a little bit more time than a 60-second soundbite. No offense, because I'm thrilled to be here. <laughs> uh, but uh, my popularity rose in large part because of long-form conversations on the Internet. People have been reading my book and finding out about the fact that we're in the midst of the greatest economic transformation in the history of our country. Yeah. What experts are calling the fourth industrial revolution, we need to have a real conversation about what that means for our society. Race. Let's talk about that. It's going to be front and center in this campaign. You said the other day on CNN that you had no choice but to call President Trump a white supremacist. Why go that far? Well, 
we have to judge people by their words and actions. And over the recent number of weeks, uh, Donald Trump's been saying things that have no place uh, in American politics, much less coming out of the White House. And so if you're asked, do you think that Donald Trump is a white supremacist and you have this record of actions that have been incredibly destructive, I mean, there's no greater responsibility than being the president of the United States and sending a leadership message in terms of what the values of this country are. And so if he's denigrating people who are Americans and saying, go back to your country, uh, if he's calling uh, for pushing back an invasion and, and, and other things that end up inciting very, very negative uh, in some cases, tragic actions, and you have no choice but to call it out. Yeah. Why do you think his use of race is not a deal breaker for some voters? You know, uh, Americans have been looking around for quite some time wondering what the heck is uh, going on with their kids' future, with their path forward. And unfortunately, it's made Americans open to some terrible ideas and terrible leadership. Uh, and that's what we have to try and dig into. It's going to be a years-long challenge. But in my opinion, all of these things are tied together. Mm. That uh, the fact that uh, Americans have seen their income stagnate while their expenses go up, and that if you are a child born in this country in the 90s, there's only a 50-50 chance you're going to do better than your parents, whereas that used to be like a 90% plus chance. The American dream is dying, and people are looking for answers. Um, what do you think about reports that the, speaking about race and being insensitive, the reports that the president mimicked the accent of some Asian leaders at a fundraiser? You know, I did hear that, and that's not shocking to me. Uh, I, I heard a story from some people where he had this giant banquet in Chinatown, uh, and then he walked out without paying the bill, saying, um, you know, my being here was reward for your restaurant enough. Um, so the, the fact that he insulted uh, uh, Asians by imitating our, our accent, I mean, uh, that's not a surprise, unfortunately. Yeah. You, you know, you talked about um, being able to have longer conversations, which propelled you to the fore. You talked about people in your book and people wanting someone different. You and Marion Williamson, you're not considered mainstream candidates. Why do you think that, do you think that that helped propel you, that you have different ideas, that you're different than everybody else, that you make comments like, we're, you know, we got the makeup on our face and we're trying to come up with a perfect sound bite so that we can somehow be like a reality TV show person? The, the tough truth, Don, is Donald Trump became our president in large part because a lot of Americans are fed up with what they've seen coming out of Washington. They feel like their leaders aren't really uh, serving to answer the challenges of this time. And so they're looking, unfortunately, in some cases, to, to really terrible uh, leaders like Donald Trump. But they're looking for answers that might not be coming from traditional politicians. I've had many Americans say to me, you don't sound like any other politician I've ever heard. And they don't see that as a bad thing. They're not like, get me a politician right now. They're like, oh, you don't sound like any politician I've ever heard. Tell me more. Yeah. So uh, that's a, that, to me, is a very clear sign of the fact that Americans are looking for real solutions instead of sound bites. As, you know, as I was preparing for the debate, there are, you have many, many fans out there who sent me. Gang, gang, thank yeah. you. <laughs> so but, and you tweeted Elon that, Musk, thank you. <laughs> yesterday, you tweeted that most people still don't understand this campaign. What are people missing about you and your campaign? Well, I think most Americans are hard-pressed just to pay their bills. They're not digging into different candidates in 2020. And if they've heard anything about me, they've heard there's an Asian guy running for president who wants to give everyone $1,000 a month. I thought you were going to do the line, this is an Asian guy who likes math, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, the opposite of Donald Trump is an Asian man who likes math. Uh, and so what they, they don't understand about this campaign is that in many ways the freedom div dividend is about everything but the money where uh, I gave $1,000 a month to a uh, family in Iowa, and I just saw him when I was there this past weekend. And he said to me, you know what I did, Andrew? I bought a guitar. And now I've been playing shows, and then this band wants me to play on their show next week, and he was beaming. When I saw him a couple of months ago, he was frankly not beaming. He was taking care of his ailing mom who has cancer. He was quite depressed seeming. Sorry, Kyle, but you seem depressed. And then, uh, and then two months later, he's like, seems like a new person. I mean, $1,000 a month means lower stress, better health, better mental health, better relationships, uh, more optimism, more arts, creativity, generosity, uh, a more open culture and society. And so what people don't understand about my campaign is you think, oh, gimmick, $1,000 a month. This is about expanding the way we see ourselves and our role in society and our value. Because if we allow the market to determine our value, yeah. We are screwed over time because the market's going to turn on more and more Americans. I just want to ask you one quick question. Oh, please. The, you know the whole thing about the Democratic Party is moving too far to the left, right? Socialism. You're talking, what do you think of that whole argument? 
Unfortunately, I think the socialism-capitalism dichotomy is really unproductive and out of date. Uh, and I'm going to quote a friend of mine, Eric Weinstein, who said, we never knew that capitalism was going to get eaten by its son technology. I mean, when you were coming up with these economic structures, you could never foresee things like artificial intelligence that could do near limitless work for next to no additional cost. Mm -hmm. So we have to start trying to solve the problems of the 21st century and saying, are you a socialist? Are you a capitalist? Is just not helpful. We just need to take the best of both worlds, if you will. And the freedom dividend, what I'm describing, sometimes people say like, oh, that's socialism. It's capitalism where income doesn't start at zero. Markets function better, businesses function better, consumers do better when we have money to spend. Andrew Yang, thank you. John, such a pleasure. You as well. Good luck out there. Thank you, sir. The Trump administration back.